CataractCoach.com, a resident's first posterior capsule rupture. Learn how to manage this cataract surgery complication here. Anonymous resident operating here, sitting superiorly, taking out the nucleus, doing some phaco here. Um, the lid speculum on the lower lid has come off of the lid margin. You see that? So nucleus being removed here. Not sure the technique exactly. Looks like a spatula in the left hand, a phaco probe in the right hand. And getting the pieces up. You want to get those up out of the capture bag. There we go. And just emulsifying them. And that looks pretty good so far. But, oh, what just happened? Weren't protecting the posterior capsule. Fluidic imbalance there. Cap's broken. It's already punctured right there. That hole's going to expand. Now, you can try to get these pieces out. I would have stopped right here and kept the probe in the eye with the non-dominant hand, injecting viscoelastic to make a barrier, and then get out that last bit, bit of nuclear piece. Ooh, so you for sure have some vitreous prolapse here. So keeping the probe in the eye is a good idea because you want it pressurized. Here comes the viscoelastic, and as you inject, take the phaco pedal, your foot off that pedal, go to position zero. There we go. You don't want to wash out all the viscoelastic, right? And then come out with the probe. And what you need to do is manage the retractment. And the catch is, you still got so much lens cortex remaining, all of it. How are you going to clean that up? And keep, don't overpressurize things here because, remember, that started off as a small hole in the poster capsule. Now look how big it is. It'll keep expanding. So now what can you do? You want okay, I got it. The viscoelastic's injected. Come out now. We need to switch over and need to remember there are going to be two different settings we're going to use depending on how much prolapse of vitreous you have. So again, see, now more viscoelastic going in, but you just keep washing it out. You need to take your foot off the phaco pedal as you inject. Inject a little bit, come off the pedal totally. Then you have no more infusion because that infusion is just going to keep washing out all your viscoelastic. That's not helpful. It's a coordinated effort. You've got to use your hands and feet together. So you can see how much fluid is leaking out of that paracentesis. A lot. Come off the phaco pedal. Otherwise, you're just not going to have any luck with this viscoelastic. So this is a, a cardinal mistake. We've got to learn from this. That lid speculum is not doing any favors either. Plus, remember, now your risk of endophthalmitis goes up. Your risk of retinal attachment goes up. Your risk of cystoid macular edema goes up. You don't want to have that lid margin in the way. Okay, there's the viscoelastic. Come off the phaco pedal finally. Are you coming off? And then you need to come out of the eye. Remember, this is 3x speed. This, can you imagine how long this was? This is, this, a resident was doing this for six minutes. There you go. Now there's your viscoelastic. So remember, you've got to come out of the eye slowly, but as you're injecting the viscoelastic, you want to replace the aqueous in the AC with viscoelastic. So you at some point have to take your foot off the phaco pedal to come off the infusion. So now when you're doing the cortex removal, you got to ask yourself how much vitreous is present. If you have vitreous present, and you'll, present, you'll know right away because you try to do cortex removal and you'll have the ding, ding, ding of occlusion on the phaco machine. Now you got to abandon your main incision. Use a pair of these, so that's two pairs, good. There's the vitrector now on the right hand. You want to start off here to get the prolapse vitreous using the anterior retractor mode. So position one is irrigation, two is the vitreous cutter, three is aspiration. And remove that. And take your time here. This is where you also want to use your non-dominant hand to inject some triumcinolum, some catalog inside the eye to stain the vitreous so you can see where it is. Then once you've cleared up sufficient amount of it away, then you can switch the phaco machine settings. Instead of anterior retractor, you switch it to IA cut, which is irrigation position one, aspiration position two, and then vitrectomy cut up position three, then you can use that mode, or you can just go to IA mode, to remove the lens cortex. So you can't leave this cortex in the eye. Do not think you're just going to yag this later. That's going to be a hot mess. So make sure you switch over the settings here, and now you need to get the cortex out. It's like, like basically doing by manual IA. If you removed enough of the prolapse vitreous, you should be able to get the cortex out, taking your time here. You can still salvage this case. It looks like the rexus is probably intact. You can get a three-piece lens with the haptics and the sulcus and optic captured behind the rexus. It'll be a really nice outcome. You can certainly do that. So you really have to take your time to understand these things. So in this video, I think the cardinal lesson is, number one, you haven't watched the curriculum series. 
On cataractcoach.com, the website, there's a 25-part curriculum series. There's one all about how to do anterior vitrectomy. You need to watch that. You need to know it, own it. And now, here, the problem is you should be switching your hands to access that sub area. That it's, you have a bimanual instrumentation, why not switch hands? But the issue here was not filling the alveolus scholastic and coming out with the phaco probe uh, in a coordinated manner. He kept injecting viscoelastic in the eye while the phaco uh, foot pedal was on position one, and that just caused all the viscoelastic to keep being washed out. And that was done for six, seven minutes total of unedited time, unsped up in real time, not understanding what's actually going on. So now you want to go back to anterior vitrectomy mode and really clean this up. You definitely want the triumph silone in here. Where is the triumph silone? That's going to help you show how much vitreous prolapse is still remaining. You're also going to want to put some um, myocol in the eye, something to, to bring down the pupil and see, okay, make sure there's no, uh, and no prolapse of vitreous coming around there and causing a peak pupil. And then finally, after you get the lens in the eye, you definitely want to put a suture in this patient and watch the patient very carefully in the post-op period. So good job, but you got a lot to learn.